I want to start off this video by saying I'm not a movie critic. I'm not a movie buff. I'm not a film buff. I'm not someone who you should be honestly looking towards when it comes to making movies or looking at movies. But I, I'm just tipping my hat in this finally because I'm, I'm just, I've seen so many of my, a YouTuber that I thought I knew and that I thought I liked is now defending this movie, Cuties, and I had to immediately unsub from him because, yeah, I try to play devil's advocate for certain things, sure, and I try to be as impartial as possible when it comes to certain things. In fact, I was willing to give this movie a chance and say maybe, just maybe, it isn't as bad as people, nope, nope, this it's as bad as people make it out to be. So I'm going to give you my review of this movie so that you don't have to watch it yourself and likely be put on a watch list. So what Cuties is, or at least what it's trying to be, is that it's a coming of age story. It's literally gives this case of this Islamic girl who's between, I think she she's 11 years old. Yeah, she's 11 years old. Coming of age in her society, in her life, and in the Islamic faith. So the B, I'll give this movie one thing, the side B plot that's going on in this movie, I can relate to. I like the side B plot because it's something I have personally seen. It's something I can personally relate to. It's personally something I've personally taken part of. The side B plot of having her, of seeing someone grow up and dealing with things they don't either want to deal with or, or like to deal with. I get that. The side B plot is she is a girl coming up in the Islamic faith. And people of the Islamic faith, especially women, tend not to have the most rights and are they're seen as little more than slaves, effectively, when it comes to the Islamic faith and women. And because of that, the men in the Islamic faith are allowed to marry multiple women, apparently up to a maximum of four. And at the start of the movie, you find out that her father is marrying uh her father is going to marry another woman. And her mother has a near mental breakdown from it. Because it's like, it's like implying that she's clearly not a good enough of a hus, a, a good enough of a wife that she that he needs to also remarry, and I get that because personally I am a son of a single mother. I didn't. My father was a fucking deadbeat. My I didn't know my father until I was eight. I thought he was dead until I was eight, and then he just suddenly randomly popped back up in my life. And even now he still barely even interacts with me. So my I get the whole concept of not wanting to deal with your father when he's doing things that you as a child or even you as an adult don't get. And it's clear because there's even a scene where she, uh, he tries to talk to her and she literally drops the phone out of their like third story window. So I get the side plot. And if it had just focused on the side plot of her trying to come to terms with her faith, with her life and the other people around her, this movie would have been fine. This movie would have been a fine movie. However, everything that happens past that, I can't condone. Because, oh, that's annoying. Because after you get past the B plot, that's just the side plot, and you get back to the main plot of her literally twerking, there's nothing to defend anymore. This is just sexualization of children for the sake of sexualization, sexualizing children. The exact same points that are being made in this movie of uh, wanting her to rebel, wanting to starting to understand her body and her feelings towards the opposite gender. That's all fine. That's utterly okay. But the moment that she starts twerking, and it's not, and let it be known, it is actual twerking. Remember that uh, music video Anaconda with Nicki, that Nicki Minaj music video where it looks like that the dance where they're on the ground and they're humping their uh, hips and it looks like they're being drilled from behind that dance. That's ex that's I'm not even like being uh, facetious with this. That's literally one of the dances that these 11 and 12 year old girls do. I had to like cover my eyes and skip over that part because it isn't just like tiny sections here and there. No, these sections where these literal children, these actual children are doing this twerking overtly sexual dances, they go on for a good like five to ten minutes. I'm not kidding you. I had to keep spamming that skip button to get over these sections because they just keep going on and on and on and on and on and I physically 
cringed and got a little bit sick at the each time they showcased it. There is even a scene where they sneak into a laser tag place and one of the people uh, apprehend them, one of the, the people who work at the place apprehend them, and he's like, I need to call your parents because you broke into here. And then a skeevy guy, pretty much a person that looks like a textbook pedophile with the whole like penciled in mustache, kind of plump, thinning hair. Like think of the literal textbook definition when you think of pedophile. He looked exactly like that. And then the main character girl literally twerked for him. Again, I'm not being facetious here. She quite literally twerked for him for her for them to be let go. I'm not quit I am not kidding at all. At all when I'm saying this. She literally twerked for a guy and clearly because he was so turned on by it, just let them go scot free. Mind you, these are eleven and twelve year olds. There's a scene where she takes a picture of her private parts when she starts to go down this rabbit hole because she thinks it'll be able to really bolster her image and make her be seen as a bad bitch. Again, not kidding. It's very short and it's not even slight it's not really like heavily seen on screen, but I don't know why anyone wants to defend this movie. If you want to defend the B plot, sure, go ahead. Cause I I can relate I can understand the B plot. I have seen firsthand with some of my students them wanting to rebel from their culture and their parents because of the things being pushed upon them. Be whether it be religion or like work ethic or or just the race, or whatever, or anything like that. Their parents, or the people around them, constantly pushes a way of, of how they need to act, how they need to be, what they need to do, or they just get disowned by their family. And because of that, they rebel. And we see that when she's rebelling, where she steals a phone, where she steals her mo money from her mother, when she does all these things, and she starts to dress more provocatively. That I can understand, because I've seen it with students. I've seen it in my... Uh, college life my first year on campus you know that rumor that the pastor's daughter tends to get really freaky when she's not under the thumb of her pastor father that's true because when i was on my first year of high, uh, college right and i went to my first college party i saw my and we just happened to be in the same school and just happened to be the same party i saw the pastor's daughter the pastor of my uh of my church on a table dancing ha nearly half to uh, half topless she had one of her tits out. So that, that concept's true, the, the whole pastor's daughter thing. And I've seen teenagers, I've seen preteens rebelling against their parents because of just all the societal pressures being pushed upon them. Whether it be from their friends, whether it be from society, whether it be from uh, social media, from the things they see. I get that. But at the point where they start actually showcasing it and almost like showcase it being a good thing. It's just so fucking weird, and anyone who's de still defending the movie at that point, you are either someone who defends pedophilia, or you're a pedophile. And I kind of personally hope, and at the end of the day, this is all some massive FBI honeypot to catch pedophiles, but it's not. I think they just, what the director was saying is that she made the movie in this direction where, with the provocative dancing of these girls, to showcase the problems with uh, sexualization with kids happening earlier and earlier and sooner and sooner nowadays and again I get that and I can see that as a teacher I can see that happening but you did not need to do it for a good five to ten minutes for each time you want to showcase this you could have done this you could have done the exact same concept with uh, adults who looked like kids get those actors who used to be on Chris Hansen to do it you could have done this at a more acceptable age, like 16. Personally, I still think that's too young, but I feel like it's a moral gray area that's seen as a little more okay, depending on where you are in the world. Hell, my state, it's 16, and I felt that, uh, God, that's so fucking weird that it's 16. Or that. Or you could have had adults, or like young adults, like 18, and then put them in situations where it's still seen against the Islamic faith, and them trying to rebel. You did not need to use actual children and actually sexualize them to get your point across here. People don't need to see animals being bru brutalized to know animal cruelty is wrong. People don't need to see um, 
They don't need to see murder happening to know that murder's wrong. We don't need to see the torture happening to know that torture's wrong. We don't need to see prison rape happening to know that prison rape's bad or wrong. And in turn, we don't need to see sexualization, sexualization of children to know that sexualization of children is wrong. Imagine if this movie was made by a male director. This movie would have immediately been called out as fucking pedo bait because it is and never been allowed. But because a woman did it and because the person who the person at Sundance gave it like an award or some people at Sundance gave it an award. Mind you, the people at Sundance or one of like the major people at Sundance has been found to have such relationships with minors. So the yeah, ad's clearly a, an achievement. This movie is going to get have people defending it, even though it's clearly pedo bait. And there you go. That's the review of Cooties. The side plot where she's try where she's rebelling and trying to come of age and trying to understand herself, her body, because she does have her first period in the movie, and every and like societal norms around herself and just society itself. That's fine. That's good. I can actually kind of like that subplot because it reminds me of some West Indian movies that I am that I've seen. I'm technically a West Indian uh culture and background, and they remind me of that. But the moment they added any of the sexualization. I just had to fucking cringe and had to go like, this is just pedophilia. This is just pedophilia. Why is this here? This movie could have been fine without it. They could have done her, made her do literally anything else besides this. Look at something else that in the Islamic faith that women aren't allowed to do. Like, I'm not sure, but I know in some faiths, like women doing tomboyish thing, like playing sports or doing ballet is seen as taboo. And they could have gotten the literal exact same point across by her doing something like that. Whether it be playing a sport, doing actual dancing like ballet, because twerking's not dancing. I don't know why anyone thinks it is. Doing ballet, stuff like that. Or doing, even just stealing. I think that they could have gotten the exact same point across without sexualizing kids. And there you go. You have now know the entire plot of Cuties and know that the stuff that you see and hear about is just as bad. If you defend this movie... You are either A, a pedophile, or B, think pedophilia is okay, and it's not. You need to be in jail, you deserve to be in jail, and you deserve to have let Bubba take his turn with you. Go fuck yourself if you defend this movie. Either way, I want everyone out there to have a good morning, evening, day, or night, wherever you're at. But for right now, I'm out. Later.